Burnout is very real. It doesn't matter whether you're doing writing, whether you're doing book reviews, whether you're doing YouTube, whether you're parenting or caring for someone else, whether you're doing art in another way. Burnout is real and it's waiting for you. All of these activities use the same thing. They use a font of creativity and of energy inside you. And if you're not careful, that well can run dry. So I'm here to give you some tips and tricks to help keep you fully immersed in your own self-care. The first thing that's most important to understand is that sometimes it's okay not to have anything left to give. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to give it to yourself, your friends, your family, or your fans. It's okay to acknowledge that you're, you're empty, you need to rest. But I'm hoping that the, the conversation that we're going to have in this video is going to help you find the resources that you need so you don't get to that point. Taking regular time for yourself is very low on most people's priorities. We're taught that school, or work, parenting, or your own business is far more important than making sure that you have the energy and healthy mental health to get up in the morning. All of this pressure builds up over time, and trust me, it does erupt inside you in some very unexpected ways. So you need to make sure that you take the time for yourself regularly, scheduling it weekly or daily to make sure that you have that time to nourish and protect yourself. Because if, you, if you're not protected, you can't protect those people around you. If you're not nourished and cared for, then you don't have anything to give them. Now, in the quadrant, self-care is a solid, non-urgent thing. Human beings can last for a very long time without taking care of themselves, running on fumes. But it isn't healthy, and it isn't a long-term way of working. Do something in this self-care time with no goal. Do something that you don't need to monitor and improve week by week. So for some people, that might be watching YouTube videos, or sewing, or baking. For others, those might be too competitive. Gentle yoga, meditation, trying new tea brands, a bubble bath. All of these things can help you find your zen and help you find your chill. Find something that you enjoy, but that doesn't tie into your self-worth or a long-term aspiration of yours. For example, I read and write a lot because I want to be a writer. And so for me, reading, although it is fun, it isn't one of those activities that I can zone out during or more importantly, I suppose, that feeds into my creative world because it does take attention and energy for me personally. And I often find that things like readathons can affect my stress levels because I am rushing to finish books on time. Uh, however, f baking, <laughs> I am a disaster at, so that's probably not a great thing either. Uh, box cakes and things like that I enjoy making because I like to stick to my strengths and not burn down the house. Socialise regularly or phone a friend. Taking time for you and for them uninterrupted, so don't take your phone, don't take anything that gives you notifications, and just spend time with each other. You'd be surprised what you'll learn. Some people find journaling can really help them identify what they're feeling and why, find the root causes of any inadequacies or insecurities. Uh, for me, journaling helps me address myself in a way that is completely judgment-free, in a way that my own self-voice isn't always. Uh, I can get all of my feelings, including those, you know, not very nice feelings about myself out onto the page and then sort through them calmly and rationally once the feelings have passed. I also advise getting back to nature, whether it's in the house with a pet or with some houseplants, or whether you just go outside and go for a walk. Leave behind the electronics, your phone, your step tracker. This isn't a, a time to care about those things. This is a time for you. And you can't monitor your self-worth and your self-help through step counters, trust me. The steps will still count. Just let your mind wander. For me, being near moving water can be so spiritually and emotionally cleansing and it just find it so relaxing. So I often try and find a waterfall or a river or a fountain to relax by. Meditate. Breathe. Just by being in the world, here, in this moment, you are worthy of this time. I really hope this has been helpful for you guys. This is something that I have been struggling with really very much last month and this month. And I'm hoping that by a lot of these tips were things that I found online or things that I journaled actually in order to help me and myself. Uh, for me, especially, it was important to 
kind of like take some time away from social media because there was a big fear of missing out there, um, particularly around writing with everyone announcing really big things and I'm so pleased for them, but I'm also, you know, not getting those things myself and it was making me feel very inadequate. So I'm going to be taking part in less readathons, I'm going to be posting, I'm going to be going back to my two video a week posting schedule and I'm going to be taking some time away from Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Um, I hope that these tips are helpful for you and that you find that you find your joy and find your way. If you have any other tips, please feel free to link them down below in the comments. I would love to have other ways to kind of like embrace taking care of myself because I am incredibly bad at it. All right, I hope you have a great book and a tasty cup of tea and I will see you next time.